Hi, my name is uh, Gurmeet Manku. This is part 8 of a video series on heart disease. The theme in this video is, do we have the so-called diseases of affluence in India? Uh, the the so-called rich people's diseases. Uh, in North India, we could call them Amiro Ki Bimariya. So what is this concept and does it exist? Wikipedia has an article on diseases of affluence, diseases of rich people. They are often NCDs like uh, obesity, type 2 diabetes, hypertension and heart disease. All four of these are metabolic conditions. We have many more, but in this video, I'll focus on these four metabolic conditions. And the question we will study is, is it true in India that as we get wealthier, as we urbanize, as we modernize, as we start migrating to richer parts of India or we migrate to richer parts of the world, is it true that the incidence or prevalence of all four goes up? In fact, substantially. Okay, So that's what I will share in this video. Let's start with obesity. Obesity was defined to be a disease in a landmark publication in 1997. The criteria was BMI exceeding 30. BMI is defined this way. It looks a little complex. Uh, but for an, a specific individual, the height is kind of constant for uh, in adult life. So it is proportional to weight in that sense. So if I become 10% heavier or 20% heavier, my BMI goes up by 10 or 20%. The It is proportional to weight. It's linear in weight. Okay, So that's all we kind of need to know to understand this presentation. Now, the WHO cutoff is for the entire world, but there is a lot of variation in the world. There are different types of people. So, is there a provision for region-specific guidelines? Yes, Indian scientists have responded. They have discovered Indians are different from the rest of the world. So, Indian uh, criteria for obesity is BMI exceeding 25, much smaller than BMI more than 30 by WHO, and the criteria used in USA also. And this was done in a publication like this, 2009, Consensus Statement, okay, by a team of uh, medical uh, specialists, okay. So let's just get a big picture of uh, obesity. It is on the rise in India. And not just India, many countries, uh, it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon, some people call it globesity, okay, it's a globesity epidemic. I think it's all parts of the world, almost all, uh, are just increasing in terms of obesity. This is 1990, this is 2016, okay? But let's study, does it increase with affluence and urbanization, okay? So in 2020 or so, uh, by Government of India's surveys estimates, 23% to 24% of men and women have crossed BMI more than 25. Rural areas, it's 20%, but urban areas is 30 to 33%. A very clear trend, okay? With ages goes up, but let's study wealth quintiles. Okay, which is the focus of this video. Now, wealth quintile means the entire population that they surveyed was divided into five buckets. The lowest bucket has 10% obesity by wealth, right? The, the bottom 20% of the population, but the top 20% of the population has 37 to 39% of the people have crossed BMI exceeding 25. Very clear trend. And look at the dramatic changes that have happened. Okay, 10% became 37 to 39%. Okay. Now, we can study it in different parts or uh, regions of India, like uh, North, Central, and Eastern, and you see variation. Uh, similar variation is in Southern, Western, and Northeast regions. Uh, but if you were to kind of plot it like this, on the x-axis is NSDP, Net State Domestic Product. Uh, on the y-axis is percentage of women and men who have exceeded BMI more than 25. So as we get uh, you know more economically prosperous, uh, the fraction of the population uh, who has crossed BMI 25 has started uh, reaching 40%, okay, both men and women, okay. So due to observations like this, we could start saying, yeah, the disease of affluence paradigm uh, does apply to India because India is not homogeneous. India has a lot of diversity going on and we can see all these trends, okay. Now, we can also see the data this way. Look at urban areas versus rural areas. Almost all the regions of uh, India uh, have, you know, uh, seem to have crossed 25% of the population uh, has BMI more than 25, but in the rural areas, it's less, okay? Here's much more detailed analysis, uh, rural versus urban, and uh, females, males, and, you know, across the x-axis, poorest versus richest in five buckets. We can pick any age group, uh, we can look at rural or urban or female or male. Just pick 
any of them and you will see a trend. For example, uh, we see almost a three to four point increase in BMI. Okay, J just look at the entire day. It's a consistent pattern going on. Migration studies have been done within India and across India to countries like UK and USA and I think Australia also. But Indians have gone to many places, but studies exist in some of these countries. Now, a migration study was done in India itself, like this one, sibling study, uh, rural versus urban dwellers, Lucknow, Nagpur, Hyderabad, Bangalore. So one sibling was in a rural area and the other sibling has moved to one of these cities. Almost 4,000 people were studied. The longer the sibling who lived in the urban area has lived in the urban area, the, the higher the BMI. It's, it's a two-point difference. Okay, do you see? Now, studies have been done on Indian immigrants in UK. So people in West London were identified for a study. Then their sibling was located in Punjab. And, you know, the BMI gap is almost uh, four points. So 23 has become like 27, for example, uh, among both men and uh, women, right? A similar study was done for people in Sandwell. The This population originally was from the Navsari region in Gujarat. So then a matching individual was found in Navsari, who was still in Navsari. And then the two were compared. And you see, the BMI increase was uh, like five points, <laughs> four to five point BMI increase. So studies like these are showing that people, when they come from India to UK, a substantial increase in BMI is happening on an average. How about Asian Indians? Asian Indians are people originally from India who have come to USA. Such people are also called Indian Americans. Okay, here is uh, something stunning. Uh, way back in 2004-2006, it was estimated that uh, the percentage of uh, Asian Indians who have crossed BMI more than 25 is about 34% plus 40 plus 6 percent, which is 40 percent. Okay, now this is very large. You know, a short while ago I was showing you in India around 2020, about 22 to 23 percent of men and women have crossed this threshold all over India. But among the Asian Indians, it is already 40 percent about 18 years ago. It is increasing. Okay, so this is very high. Now here's another study based upon 2012-2016 data. As per their estimate, 46% have crossed the BMI threshold of 25, okay? Now, if you look at BMI 23, according to comparable date ranges, 76 to 80% of the population has crossed this. Now, this is overweight and obese combined. Another study, they chose uh, 1,000 people um, from seven US cities, uh, big ones, and 49, like 50%, were more than BMI 25 and another 25 were overweight, okay? Now, if you sum them up, this is 75%, which is comparable to the previous slide estimates, okay? Uh, yet another study. So, they were estimating BMI more than 30. It's around 10%. If I go back a few slides, this number used to be 6%. In this time frame, 2004-2006, now uh, it has risen to like 10%. So, these numbers are increasing, Okay. <laughs> Okay, so there was a long <laughs> discussion of obesity in different parts of India. And I guess you see what I'm trying to say. Uh, as we become wealthier, as we become modernized, as we become urbanized, as we start migrating to richer parts of India or to richer parts of the world, the BMI seems to be increasing. So that, that's all I'm saying. And the increases are not simple. They, they seem substantial. Okay, let's look at diabetes now. Um, diabetes in India is on the rise. 1990 to 2016, we can see it is increasing, okay? But rural versus urban, much more than urban and all across India, okay? GDP, as the GDP of a state is increasing, prevalence of diabetes seems to be increasing. In general, it's a trend, okay? This is very detailed data. We can compare rural versus urban population, also look at uh, males and females. We can look at different age groups uh, and we can compare poorest versus richest people divided into five buckets. Across the board, we can pick any age group, rural or urban or males and females, there is an increase going on. And what are we measuring? High blood glucose percentage. So what fraction of the population has high blood glucose? Consistently, you can see richer people have it and urban people, more of them have this, okay? <laughs> Okay, then some study was done for the, the metropolitan cities, okay, like Delhi, Chennai, Karachi. Look at this, 25% people had diabetes and 23% people in Delhi and Chennai. That's very high. How about Asian Indians? 
So what do you expect? Will it be low or will it be high comparable to Delhi rates? Well, it is comparable to the New Delhi rates measured by that CARS study. Asian Indians are people from Indian originally who are in USA now, also known as Indian Americans. 25% rate among men, 17% among women. Okay. It's in general, Asian Americans have high diabetes rate, generally at high risk. And we are asked to screen at BMI of 23 okay and not 25 as is done for US population as a whole and the rate for the South Asian countries combined is 23 percent uh, a large number of them are Asian Indians okay and we have a explicit program in place called screen at 23 for Asian Americans okay and it has to do with uh, uh, the BMI cutoffs for overweight and obesity but why are these cutoffs low it's because we get much more diabetes uh, at lower BMI. So there are all these technical details. Uh, I'm going to skip those details uh, and move to hypertension. So let's study hypertension in India. We can see a clear trend, much more in urban areas, less in rural areas. Okay, Almost all regions seem to be red, which means more than 30% of the population has uh, 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 high blood pressure going on. Okay, So much more detail here. We can look at any age group Okay, we can look at rural versus urban. Uh, we can look at men and women. Consistently, we will see, uh, you know, the blood pressure seems to be going up. The systolic blood pressure, okay, uh, across wealth quintiles. As we get richer, this phenomenon is happening, okay. Okay, let's study heart disease in India. So, the big picture is that all across India, over a 27 year time frame, from 1990 till 2017, the number of people who are dying due to NCDs is going up, non-communicable diseases. Okay, So these red colored deaths like communicable, maternal, neonatal, nutritional, they are reducing as India is uh, becoming economically more prosperous. Okay, Most of my friends don't face these red colored deaths. A few of us will face them, but it's not that common. Most of us are going to face the blue colored deaths and at the very bottom we have um, accidents and suicides kind of deaths. Half of these blue colored deaths uh, and these purple colored deaths, which are NCDs, is cardiovascular and many more diagnoses happen. And you can kind of see the number of cardiovascular deaths is increasing over a 20 year time period, right? It's on the rise as India is getting more prosperous. You can look at different regions of India. You know, we have this blue versus red uh, division, but it's blues are increasing, okay? Um, we can look at state by state this way also and a few states stand out you know uh, Punjab, Kerala, Tamil Nadu they also have this feature that uh, the number of uh, people the fraction of the population below poverty line is among the lowest in these states okay very detailed analysis was done in this paper they measured district level wealth quintiles wealth quintiles means you know the, the poorest people versus richest people into five buckets in rural and urban areas the there's a technical term called mean 10 year cvd risk heart disease risk is going up very clear trend okay uh, this is very detailed data we can pick any age 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 uh, age range we can look at rural versus urban or uh, within urban we can look at males and females as we get richer the risk for heart disease is going up a very clear trend across the board okay Based upon those reports, you know, uh, news articles got written. Areas with higher household wealth, education and urbanization tend to have higher cardiovascular disease risk. Surprisingly, it's wealth, education, urbanization, right? Most of us believe that as we get educated, we probably know more about health. <laughs> we are supposed to. But do we really know more about health as we get richer? Uh, how about wealth as we get wealthier? Uh, do we get healthier uh, as we urbanize? Surprisingly, our cardiovascular disease risk goes up with all these. Okay, uh, Kerala, which has the highest general li literacy rate in the country, also has the highest predicted cardiovascular disease rate. So there are trends like this in place. Okay, let's look at heart disease among Asian Indians. Okay, so Asian Indians are people of Indian origin who are now in USA. 28% of uh, women and 31% of men die due to heart disease. Many more get the ailment, okay? More diagnosis than deaths. Here's a slide which I'm trying to share with my friends. Um, Asian Indians have a very high heart disease rate as compared to US national average. Three times higher uh, coronary artery disease, okay? 
hospitalization is four times higher complications um, uh, are two to four times higher there's a risk model according to which um, it's 6.6 times higher than uh, as compared to the us national average uh, um, it's a more malignant condition diabetes rates are three times higher than us national average okay so <laughs> a lot of statistics don't look good for us uh, you know we have to be very 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 extra extra careful with respect to heart disease diabetes obesity hypertension uh, i wish most people knew this okay uh, among the asian indians we have to be extra extra careful <laughs> okay now is there a dietary component to the disease of affluence what does diet have to do with this well disease of affluence article at wikipedia lists dietary factors also these are the four in subsequent videos i will go through many more details as to how higher consumption of 1 2 3 and 4 leads to a lower fiber diet and a higher fat diet okay and it is possible to forego all four of these dietary components we might wonder what do we eat if we don't eat these four well there is american college of lifestyle medicine which is mainstream medicine in usa it's a specialty and they advocate a whole food plant based methodology and we can choose the low fat version of it as per dr esselstein now these dietary changes uh, which lead to higher ncds have been observed way back in 1960s across 85 country studies like this i will i will explain all this in more detail in uh, future videos it has been observed in 1980s again uh, 2000s okay the big picture is that as we get affluent and modernized and urbanized ncd rates have been observed to go up our diet becomes high fat and low fiber but we can choose to have a low fat high fiber diet by making all those changes i was hinting at and that is the aclm whole food plant based methodology now based on that methodology are there any interventional studies yes dr esselstein and dr arnish they have done landmark studies for heart disease and i will share the jaw dropping results in subsequent videos okay it's on the basis of these guidelines that i am such a huge fan of these uh, guidelines now this aclm food plate starts coinciding with something called nature cure or naturopathy which is promoted and protected by ayush ministry government of india and if you study these in detail uh, you will see they start overlapping with the whole food plant based guidelines and that is what i am noticing these uh, amazing interconnections between uh, how to construct amazing food plates okay uh, mahatma gandhi was a huge fan of nature cure naturopathy naturopathy days remembered after something mahatma gandhi did way back in 1945 and here are a few pointers to get started through youtube videos if you want to know more about nature cure naturopathy so i'm writing articles at uh, thankful to plants i'll cover a lot of points i i showed you quickly in the last few slides in detail in almost 28 different videos i'm making okay if you like this video and the series please like and subscribe and share the video thank you so much